Yo, what is up guys? My name is Shiki from Kari Tutor, and today is going to be the first episode of a short series I'm going to be starting on grammar rules. Now, these grammar rules will help prepare you guys for the writing section of the SAT. Um, it's my belief that the writing section is one of the easiest to improve on. All you really need to know are a couple of grammar rules, and then you'll be on your way for that perfect 400, right? So today's episode is going to be about relative clauses. Now I must preface this by saying um, the first few episodes of the series are going to be about topics that are not exactly tested on the SAT. However, knowing this may, be, may help problem solving become a little bit easier and more importantly, it helps understand future grammar rules that we'll be going over. So yeah, relative clauses, our first topic. So what is a relative clause, right? A relative clause is basically a portion of a sentence that starts with a relative pronoun. Now, relative pronouns can be words like who, whom, whose, or that, right? So, the key point is that these, when phrases start with these words, it indicates that they're not directly needed to understand the primary meaning of the sentence, right? These are generally used to describe a noun or an animal or something like that, right? So they're not directly needed to understand the main point or the core of the sentence, right? So that is the key point here. So here's an example of a sentence. So as you can see, the tiger that was hungry ate my aunt who earlier today, right? So if we read this again, the tiger that was hungry, ate my aunt earlier today. Now, if we just cross this out, we have a sentence remaining. The tiger ate my aunt earlier today. Now, of course, the sentence still makes sense. And again, this is the key point. You have to get down to the core of the sentence. The core of the sentence makes it very easy to understand the point of the author, and more importantly, makes problem solving a lot easier, right? So here we have a similar example. However, this time we added some comma phrases. Now, comma phrases are simple are similar in that they're additional, non-essential phrases separated by commas. So here's an example. After escaping, the tiger that was hungry ate my aunt, who was nice and juicy, earlier today. Now, if we read this again, after escaping, the tiger that was hungry ate my aunt, who was nice and juicy, earlier today. And now, what we're left with is the core again. So the core is the tiger ate my aunt earlier today. Again, this is crucial because it makes understanding the sentence way easier. When first reading it, you may be a little confused. What What is the author trying to say? Now, by illuminating these relative clauses and comma phrases, it makes it's exactly the same sentence as here. However, this has additional details that are not needed to understand the sentence. Okay. So here's a more complicated example here. After 9 p.m., the man, who was tall and handsome, took his lead pencil with 0.5 millimeter lead and wrote his name at the top of his homework. Now, let's try this again. After 9 p.m., the man, who was tall and handsome, took his lead pencil with 0.5 millimeter lead and wrote his name at the top of his homework. So the way we identify comma phrases here are, of course, the commas here, 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 right? And here we can see that this is simply a description of the pencil. So we can also eliminate that because that is a relative clause. It's a relative to the pencil, right? So if we read this again, the man took his lead pencil and wrote his name at the top of his homework. A very simple sentence. However, being scattered with all these relative clauses and comma phrases it may be a little bit difficult to understand at the start. Now here we have three examples that I want you guys to actually try. So I'll, get, I'll wait a few seconds, hopefully pause the video, give it a shot, and then I'll go over the answers. All right, so number one, despite the many warnings, the boy who was nine years old interacted with a stranger. Now this one's pretty simple. Despite the many warnings, again, you identify this with the comma, the boy who, this uh, again, a relative pronoun as we learned earlier, who was nine years old, interacted with the stranger. So if you read this again, the boy interacted with the stranger. You see a very simple sentence when you eliminate these non-essential phrases. All right, the cat ate the orange that was blue. 
Okay, that's also very simple. There's only one relative pronoun here, so we could just eliminate this portion of the sentence, and then we're done. The cat ate the orange. Right? Because this, again, is simply describing the orange. It's relative to the orange. Okay. Question three. Workers often work overtime, which typically has increased pay. Okay, so this is, again, pretty simple. Which, again, relative pronoun. Just eliminate this portion of the sentence. Again, this is relative to the overtime, describing the overtime. So workers often work overtime. That's basically the sentence there. So I hope this helped. If you have any questions, please leave them in the description. I'll try answering them as soon as possible. Um, yeah, thanks.